Assalamualaikum and a very good day to the audience and our beautiful Miss Azikin. We are from group 10 and today we are going to present about questionnaire. So this is the list of our members in this group and I am number 6, Muhammad Amiru bin Sufyan, 047924. So what is actually a questionnaire? As you already know, it is often mistaken with survey. So for comparison, let's see the purpose of both survey and question. So for the purpose of survey, there are three. To describe a sample or population, to explain behavior or attitudes, and to explore or discover new relevant topics. For the purpose of questionnaire, there are three. To obtain information from a number of respondents, to gather opinion, and to gather statistical data. So what is the definition of survey? It is basically a research method. A research method that uses scientific sampling and questionnaire design. This is to measure characteristics of the population with statistical precision. It is also a research method that enables management to make comparisons between groups. It is to provide estimates from a sample that can be related to the entire population with a degree of certainty. While for the definition of questionnaire, it is a data collection instrument on a wide number of phenomena. So for the question, is survey and questionnaire the same? The answer for that question is no. A questionnaire is an instrument for collecting data and almost always involve asking a given subject to respond to a set of oral or written questions while a survey is a process for gathering data that could involve a wide variety of data collection methods including a questionnaire. It also could involve observing or measuring things that go beyond questions including physical measurements judgment by a researcher, and analysis of other existing data. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Farahana bin Jirazali, 0474-72. And I'm going to present about types of questions in questionnaire. So, there are two types of questions in questionnaire, and that is open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. So, the first one, open-ended questions required respondents to formulate an answer using their own words, either writing or verbal. It is also known as qualitative data. The answers given can be discussed subjectively, which help the researchers to see things from the perspective of the respondents regarding the questionnaire. The options or predefined categories are not suggested. The respondent replies in their own words without being constrained by a fixed set of possible responses unlike closed-ended questions that give A, B and C. Sometimes the open-ended questions can be mixed with closed-ended questions. For example, do you feel stressed? Yes or no? If yes, what kind of situations makes you stress? There are two types of open-ended questions, completely unstructured and word association. Completely unstructured, the question that does not influence the answer of respondent. The respondent answers the question based on their intelligence, either its knowledge or belief system. For example, what is your opinion on linguistic imperialism? Then the respondent must answer based on what they know about linguistic imperialism. Next, word association. Words are presented and the respondent mentions the first word that comes to mind. For example, if interviewer says English, the respondent may say language and elaborate more about why English is associated with language. So this is one of the examples of word association. Look. Next. So next is closed-ended questions. Closed-ended questions are often used to describe a person's attributes, beliefs, or attitudes. It provides a list of answers for the respondents. No discussion for the answer given, unlike open-ended questions. So let's see types of closed-ended questions, shall we? So there are five types of closed-ended questions, and those are yes or no questions, 
multiple choice, scale questions, rank ordering question, and the last one, false choice question. The first one, yes or no question. The respondent answers the questions with a yes or no. For example, did you vote for the camping last year? Yes or no? This is one of the many examples of yes or no question in questionnaires. Next, the second one is multiple choice questions. The respondent has several options from which to choose. Offers more than two answers, can add others so that the respondent can give alternative answers. Respondents have to choose which statement relate to their opinion. So this is one of the examples where did you hear of our product, you can tick more than one. So the respondent can answer either it's radio, television, magazine, newspaper, talk of the town. If there is no answer given that is related to their opinion, then, then they can write their own answers on if others please tick. Scale questions. Responses are graded on a continuum. For example, rate the appearance of Garnier product on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most preferred appearance. Examples of types of scales are Likert scale and semantic differential scale. So this is an example of Likert scale. Let's see. 1 means strongly disagree, 2 disagree, 3 neutral, 4 agree, 5 strongly agree. So let's look at number two. The support services to this unit respond in a timely way. If the respondent choose number five, that means they are strongly agree that the support services to this unit respond in a timely way. So what is semantic differential scale? The survey answering options are grammatically on opposite adjectives at each end. It is a type of rating scale designed to measure quantitative meaning of objects, events, and concepts. The connotations are used to derive attitudes towards the given object, events, or concept, and that is the use of semantic differential skill. Yes, the next one, rank ordering question. Respondent needs to arrange the options in the list according to their preference. Usually, the numbers start in descending order and respondent can choose what is the best statement to describe their preference and the list of what they prefer as their answers. For example, please choose the six houses in the list below and arrange all of the houses based on your preference by writing from number 1 to 6. 1 means what you prefer the most. Two, second most prefer, and the list goes on until six. Six is what you least prefer. This is one of the examples. Please rank order benefits of your job. Most important on top. So the respondent must answer the questions by arranging to what they prefer the most on the benefits of their job. So the last one. Post choice question requires respondents to provide an answer, agree or disagree, forcing them to make judgments about each response option. Neutral options like not sure, no opinion or not applicable are not included as a choice for the respondent. For example, which of the following statements show your opinion about linguistic imperialism? So the respondent can answer whether it is a threat or it's not a threat. Guidelines in questionnaire. First, words must be composed of a simple language that fits with target groups. For example, how likely would you be to subscribe to UIE's library? The question can be possibly answered by undergraduate students because they are using journals on internet as their references. And as we all know, UIE's library keeps all the online journals. Second one, questions should be clear, affirmative, direct as possible using neutral words and not double barrel means not double meaning last one arrange the format accordingly section a demographic data section b questions based on research scope section c d based on what you are researching that's all from me thank you next my comrade will continue hi my name is Aunina Najwa with metric number 047341 
So let's move to the next part, which is piloting the questionnaire. If you are conducting questionnaire for a research study, you need to pretest your questionnaire to make sure it's going to work for your purposes. So it's very important to observe how a respondent reacts to the questions that have been formulated. This will help the researcher to identify areas and problems to make improvements in shaping the content and also structure of the questionnaire based on their feedbacks. So there are three parts in piloting the questionnaire. The first part is selecting the sample. So the first one you have to identify your target group. The sample for your pretest should be members of the same group for the full study. But if you can get people from the exact target group, find another group that has the same characteristics as them in terms of age, gender, and any other factors relevant to your study. The second one is number of people in group. You need to have at least five people per group or more, depending on the characteristics or diversity of your target group. If your target group comes from different countries, then you might need more. It depends on your research topic. The third one is cover the range of your target group. You have to make sure different subgroups has a chance to be part of this pretest and understand the questions the same way. For example, if your research topic involve uh, opinion of people who comes from diverse educational backgrounds, then make sure your sample also include people who have less education as well as people with a higher education. The next part is completing the questionnaire. So firstly, you need to train the respondents. You need to make sure that the questionnaire is administered to the respondent using the same methods you will use in the real study because this is to ensure the results of the pilot are not affected by the delivery or collection later. Uh, secondly, observe the respondents answering the questions. When you are observing your pilot respondents completing the questionnaire, you will get a lot of information from studying their body language. You can look for um, places where they hesitate to answer or make mistakes. From there, you can improve your questionnaire later. Thirdly, you can ask respondents to think out loud. If respondents think out loud, you can see where instructions are confusing. For example, I don't understand this section. I don't understand this question. I can find the next section. This, based on these comments, you can fix the questionnaire letter. The last one is solicit additional feedback. After the respondents complete the, completing the questionnaire, you can ask them out uh, about their experience, experience responding to your questionnaire. If there were any question that they didn't answer, just ask them why because this feedback will help you later. For the last part is implementing the result. So firstly, you have to submit the data in computer software or spreadsheet. Once the respondents have completed the questionnaire, submit the result in computer program exactly as you plan to do for the full study. This process allows you to find any possible issues with the methods you plan to use to analyze your data later. Next, you have to analyze the result. So based on your analysis of the data collected, identify basic formatting or data errors. For example, if the pilot has revealed that a question is unnecessary, redundant, or overly difficult to understand, you may want to discard it or edit the questionnaire. Uh, next um, is you have to make improvement. After you analyzing the result, it's normally clear what are the major problems for your questionnaire, so, so you can just uh, go improving the questionnaire to address those problems. Once you have fixed the errors, you can um, you can move to the full study. So once you have done with piloting the questionnaire, 
you can move to the next part, which is distributing the questionnaire. There are few steps and important elements that you have to consider when distributing the questionnaire. So the first one is targeted group. So before distributing the questionnaire, you have to get uh, their consent first. You must consider the best way to gain the consent of your respondents and you also have to give them enough information so that they can decide whether they want to take part in this questionnaire or not. So next is the number of respondents. So generally at least 100 respondents are recommended for the questionnaire. However, respondents or sample size for the questionnaire can be different depending on the number of population. Um, this is based on the journal by Critchie and Morgan. Uh, I will provide the table at the end of the at the end of the slide to refer. So moving on to geographical distribution. What does it mean here is cost and time for travel. If the sample is very dispersed and in wide area, then personally administering the questionnaire will be hard. You must consider the best method and place to distribute the questionnaire. So location is also one of the elements that you have to consider when conducting the questionnaire. So next is preparing the updated materials. So you have to make early preparations for the material to make sure the number of questionnaire is enough according to the number of respondents. You can also prepare uh, extra copies uh, to avoid any difficulty when distributing the questionnaire letter. So uh, next is giving information to the respondents. So before distributing the questionnaire, it is very advisable uh, to give some information to the respondents. For example, uh, you can just tell them to put the questionnaire in front and leave the hall once they have finished answering the questionnaire. So giving them uh, information and small details actually help to ease the process of distributing and collecting the questionnaire letter. So distributing uh, the questionnaire and observing them. So what does it mean here is once the respondents are ready, you can distribute the questionnaire the same way you did for the pilot. It is better actually for the researchers to distribute and administer the the respondents themselves because they can monitor the process. This is to avoid missing answers and help the respondents who might have difficulties when answering. So the last one is collecting the questionnaire. So you have to make sure you collect and check all the copies according to the number of respondents so that you won't have missing copies. This is to ensure you get enough data to analyze later. To recap, what is important details when distributing the questionnaire? So the first one is number of respondents. As you can see in the table by Craig C and Morgan, N here refer to the population, while S here refer to the sample size. If the based on this table, if the population is around 100, the sample size or respondent needed for you to answer the questionnaire uh, is only around 80 respondents and it is enough to be the representative of the population. And what you need to remember is you must get the consent of the respondents first before distributing the questionnaire. So next one is preparing the materials. You need to make sure there is no mistake with the, with the materials and prepare enough copies for the respondents. So finally is distributing and collecting the questionnaire. As what I have mentioned before, the researcher need to distribute and collect the questionnaire themselves so that they can monitor the process and avoid missing copies. Thank you. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Shahirah binti Abdullah Suhimi, metric number 047336. So now I am going to present my part on ethical issues when doing surveys and questionnaires. So now, we are starting with the definition of ethics. According to the Collins Dictionary, ethical means in accordance with principles of conduct that are considered correct, especially those of a given profession or group. So as we can see here, the keywords are principles of conduct and considered correct. But what exactly principles of conduct means? It actually addresses the ethical practices in a profession. However, as ethical practices varies from profession to profession, it is impossible to provide a universal answer to the question. However, there are certain behaviors or morals that can be considered as universally unethical, such as breaching confidentiality and introducing bias. 
Moving on to the next point, which is ethical issues to consider concerning research participants. So the first issue is seeking consent. We as a researcher, we need to seek consent from the participants before we ask them for any sorts of information. The subjects needs to be aware of the type of information we need, why the information is needed, what purpose it will be put to, how the participants are expected to participate in the study, and how the information will indirectly or directly affect the participants. The next issue is seeking sensitive information. Certain types of information can be regarded as sensitive or confidential by some people and thus an invasion of privacy. Oftenly, people find questions on sexual behavior and drug use as a privacy. However, certain people also find questions on marital status, income and age as a privacy as well. So, if the researcher needs this sorts of information to complete their research, it, it is not considered as unethical for the researcher to ask, uh, to ask the participants. However, the researcher needs to tell the respondents beforehand that what type of information that, that is needed. And the researcher needs to also give sufficient time for the respondents to decide whether they are able, whether they are willing to share the information or not. The next point is ethical issues to consider relating to the researcher. So as a researcher, the first issue that we need to consider is avoiding bias. Bias is a deliberate attempt either to hide what you have found in your study or to hide something disproportionately to its true existence. So for example, like Amira, Amira study, the perceptions of Malaysian university students towards the sexist re representation of women in product advertising. So even though you as a researcher have a personal opinion, you despise the sexist representation, you, cannot, you still cannot let your personal opinion affect the data representations. The next issue that needs to be considered by researchers is inappropriate use of information. The use of information in a way that directly or indirectly affects the respondents adversely is unethical. If the researcher needs the information that has the possibility of harming the respondents in any way to complete their studies, it is still considered as ethical to ask the questions. However, the respondents need to be well informed of every single possibility first. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nushafawani binti Azali, metric number 047499 and today I will present about advantages and disadvantages of doing surveys and questionnaires. So let's start with the advantages. The first one is it is less expensive. Doing questionnaire is economical because it saves time, effort and money especially when you want to collect massive amounts of data from a large number of people. Next, it offers greater anonymity. Questionnaires ensures anonymity to its respondents because there is no face-to-face -face interaction between the respondents and researcher. The respondents will be more confident answering the questions because they will not be identified or judged by anybody for having a particular view or opinion. They will also feel more comfortable to express their view, especially on sensitive issues. Next, it provides an efficient way to collect data. Questionnaire allows researchers to gather information from a large audience. Using questionnaire for data collection is advantageous because it is standardized. It allows the researcher to ask same question in the same order to all respondents. Now let's move on to the disadvantages of doing surveys and questionnaires. 
So the first one is limited response by the respondent. The application of questionnaires is limited to those who can only read and write. Questionnaires may be unsuitable for illiterate or semi-illiterate respondents. When do using questionnaire, there is a chance that some questions may be ignored or left unanswered. Next is the issue of reliability. Some respondents may give dishonest answers and not bring 100% truthful to their answers. Some people may do not have the time reading the questions properly or they do not feel any importance in understanding the questions. This may lead to inadequate data to be analyzed by the researcher. And the last one is respondents may misunderstand or misinterpret the questions. Researcher doesn't have the opportunity to make any clarification when the respondents do not understand the questions unless the respondents could get in touch with the researcher. If different respondents interpret questions differently, this may lead to inaccurate data collection. So that's all from me. Thank you. I will continue on example of a study that uses questionnaire. My name is Siti Nurlaida Binti Zarmin, metric number 047346. The title of research that we choose is Student Attitudes and Perception of Using Facebook for Language Learning, which was conducted by Chris Gamble and Michael Wilkins on 2014. This research aim is to provide insight on Japanese students' perception on how by joining the activities through Facebook could help them in learning language. Okay, so the participant for the study is 97 students which include 50 male and 47 female students from three private universities in Japan. They were recruited in a voluntary basis. Now we learned that voluntary falls under bias sampling because it is non-random because the participants volunteered themselves for the study. Perhaps they found this topic interesting for them so that's why it is non-random. The majority of the students were 18 years old. All participants had tests of English as a foreign language scores ranging from 210 to 490 which is considered beginner to intermediate learners of English. Since the Facebook is the main subject for the study, so it is needed for the participant to have prior experience of using Facebook. Despite this study is linguistic, which is English focused, but the participating students were also including English, business, economic, and even sociology majors, which means the student came from several different departments. Okay, the methodology. So all of the participants were given 26 item quantitative questionnaire using a 7 point Likert scale and an open ended qualitative questionnaire for this study. So by having quantitative and qualitative here, we know that research, the researchers utilized the mixed method in the study as they conducted both qualitative and quantitative questionnaire. The questionnaire included both statement type and question type items and was divided into three sessions. Both section 1 and 2 consisted of 10 statements. Okay, so section 1 focused on examine the respondent's opinion of using Facebook for general educational purposes, which means its function and accessibility, whilst section number 2 focused more on participant opinion of the applicability or its effectiveness of Facebook group function for conducting specific activities for language learning. Okay, so here is the example of section 1 question, which is their perception of using Facebook, which is the function of Facebook. So, if they, if they strongly agree that, yeah, Facebook can be used both socially and for educational purposes, then they can choose 7. But if they think, no, I don't think so, I think Facebook function works best only for social. So, they can choose 1. Section number 2. Their perception of activities on Facebook, which is Facebook effectiveness in conducting group activity for learning language. So if they think, yeah, Facebook is a very good place to discuss different topics with classmates, then they can choose seven. If they think, I really disagree, then they can choose one. 
section number three contain six demographic and personal question which is usually about their genders their year of study and how long and how often do you facebook and lastly upon collecting of both the pre and post test data pre and post test data here means that the researcher conducted two stages of collecting data then after that the researcher came out with subsequent paper-based open-ended written response questionnaire for a better confirmation now open-ended written response questionnaire here means a qualitative questionnaire with that thank you